Good morning. Yesterday it was snowing here in Zurich and you can still see it a little bit from the snowy mountains. Today it's covered with clouds, but it's dry. And already yesterday we knew that we're going to be able to shoot the movie here because the weather prognosis has become really, really reliable. Is, this, is the same true for the prognosis of stock markets? It isn't. My eyes opened when I read Peter Lynch's book, Beat the Street. Peter Lynch explained that for, decade, for a decade at least, he was every year invited by Barron's, a prestigious Wall Street Journal, to give his prediction together with 30 other Wall Street experts. And he says the predictions that they gave were always totally wrong. The year 1987 started with the most favorable prediction and it was the big crash. And the year that had the biggest boom in the 80s was the year where they were the most skeptical. This opened my eyes and I'm not looking at prognosis anymore. Philip Tetlock, a professor also from the United States, analyzed this in more detail. He interviewed 80,000 analysts, political forecasters, and asked them about their political opinion for the future, you know, the prognosis. And he found out that their prognosis were slightly worse than just throwing a dice. Can you imagine? 80,000 experts would have been better replaced by pure chance. Now this tells you a lot. And especially, <laughs> this is especially important because I'm now going to tell you my prognosis for, nine, for 2017. And why, why am I doing this? Very simple, because then you understand me better and I think that's important when I give you advice what stocks to buy. Now, I'm very skeptical for 2017. I'm buying only a few stocks. I'm not buying what I could be buying. As a matter of fact, I paid, a lot, I paid back a lot of my house debt. I have now a lot less debt on my house because I couldn't see any other good investment opportunities. I'm still not buying US shares. I think the US is extremely overvalued and with Donald Trump, it got even worse. That's not a good reason to invest now. I still like Europe a lot. I believe in social justice, I believe in freedom, and I believe that we have a very strong foundation of both here in Europe. And stability is, one, is something of the most important aspects of prosperity. That's why I like Europe and I keep investing here. I also bought a few bitcoins. I bought bitcoins worth 2% of my wealth because I just like the technology. It's purely speculative. But that's what I did. And I bought a little bit of gold because you never know. That was my decision for 2017 and I wish you good luck with your own decision.